What is good? Welcome to Snap Squad. I am Gali Sovereign, and of course, I got with me Sir Knight. And uh, today, we are going to do the Two Snaps podcast. We're going to talk about uh, the OTA card balance updates. Uh, we're going to talk about that new car sitting on your marketplace you might not want to buy, or you might want to buy it, <laughs> Iron Lad. And uh, should Galactus be banned? But, you know, let's start off with uh, the OTA card balance updates, man. So, uh yeah, man, we, we got these uh a couple of little changes, nothing really too drastic. I feel like I don't know, what do you think, man? Did Drax even was that even like uh a change that was like worthy? Like I feel like that that didn't really make any difference for Drax. Yeah, he, he's weak. Like he's weak no matter like like what scenario he's in. But it makes sense to make him a four six because they pretty much make like all the popular four drops is like a four six, you know, like White Queen's mm-hmm. a four six, Iron Lad's a four six, and Chatters is a four six, Rock Slide's a four six, the Fang is a four six. Like a lot of the primary four drops are like four six. It's just a four six. And yeah. so they just like it seems like they just kind of made him like the rest. Right. Mm-hmm. But now they're changing some of these four sixes as we'll get to. So it, it, this is a this is actually a buff for Drax because because Drax's ability is like so random, you kind of like have to guess. Or yeah, try to you gotta play get it right to where your opponent will play. It doesn't always work, right? So you're not always getting the benefit of Drax when you play him. Like when mm-hmm. you play, uh, you know, White Queen or Rock Slide, you're always getting the benefit of the card. You don't have to. There's no like RNG or guessing, right? Like where, um, I, where should I play? Right. Right. Um, right. She's always gonna guys. go off unless she so, got a freaking Cosmo. It's, from. You can almost just say, let's say forty percent of the time, it's like one in three because there's three locations, so there's like one in three chance. But you're probably also creating scenarios in which you can kind of also determine where your opponent might be playing. Like if you play a Storm Lane and you play Drax after, that's probably a good chance you're gonna get Drax's effect to go off because the mm-hmm. opponent's very highly incentivized to play into the Storm Lane since it's the last right. one they can. So let's just say it's forty percent of the time you get Drax's effect off, right? Um, that means 60%, 60% of the time you're not. So with the previous version of Drax, that means he's always five power 60% of the time, right? Now mm-hmm. now he'll be six power 60% of the time. So this is actually a net buff to his overall points he'll be giving you from game to game. So this is a buff. It doesn't mm-hmm. seem like much because in the end, if you get his effect off, he's a four eight in both scenarios. Yeah. Whether he's the old four five or the or the new four six, but yeah. because he'll be a four six on the misses now, that means he's giving you an overall net power of one, a little over half the time. So it's a tiny puff. Yeah. <laughs> Nonetheless, but it's a very right. puff in my opinion. Okay. All right. For sure. Yeah. Um. um I guess I can see what you're saying there. I honestly don't know if plus two power. I don't even know if a four eight's worth it. Like, I don't know if a 4 eight's even strong enough, right? Like, imagine they just made a card, a vanilla thing that was 4 eight. I wonder mm-hmm. how often that'd be played. It probably would be played. But, you know, is it really, like, that busted? Is it really that broken? Is it better than Shang? Would I run it over Shang-Chi? Or would I run it over, you know, en- Enchantress? Probably, yeah, probably not, no, because no. those cards are with a lot more power. Like, me killing a 9-power yeah. minion on the other side of the board... That's like, let's say it's just nine power. Let's say I kill America Chavez with Shang Chi. Well, that's nine power they're losing plus three power from Shang Chi. I'm getting that's a twelve power swing. So how mm-hmm. is adding just plus two power to Drax like going to compete with cards like Shang or Enchantress, right? So I don't even know if Drax is even good even with his plus two power, even if he had it all the time. So yeah. I, I just I just think Drax is kind of like a bad card in general, you know. Yeah, you know what? What one card I wish got like a um a nerf a little bit is Cosmo. I feel like if Cosmo's, <laughs> people talk about Cosmo. if Cosmo's out there, dude, you can't really like stop. You can't stop Cosmo. You just have to like you have to play ongoings and stuff like that, right? You have to get around the the on reveal ability. But like, there should be a way to shut Cosmo down. Like, you can't even enchantress Cosmo because it's a, a damn on reveal. So Cosmo just shuts that down. You know. So I, I think he's a little too – he's a little See, the, too – The thing uh, with Cosmo, uh, though, it's like without Cosmo, you then have no way of defending your, your board. So that's kind of like the difficulty, yeah. right? Like Cosmo is super strong on his own. Like, yeah, I've won games just by playing Cosmo. Right? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you're weighing down real quick. <laughs> like if I see Cosmo. Yondo, 
or, or Yondu, and then I see Electro, then, oh, I, oh, this is Galactus. And, like, I can see the lane that the opponent is kind of, like, keeping clear. And mm -hmm. I'll wait till turn five. I'll drop Cosmo. He'll flip and then shut Galactus off, right? Like, Cosmo, like, win ga wins games, like, on her own, right? But then if I don't have Cosmo, like, if you nerfed it, right, or, mm -hmm. or did something to change her effect, then it's, like, how do I defend my, you know, Dino? How do I defend any of my big cards from Shang-Chi, right? Or Enchantress? Like, is there any way for me to defend myself without Cosmo? So Cosmo is like that card that like very poor, like it's very polarizing, right? Like some people hate it. And then yeah. some people like say it has to be the way it is to have some counterplay, you know, to things like Shang-Chi and stuff. So yeah, that's <laughs> true. a lot of people call for him being changed. Like maybe like to a four cost or like a just four like three a or something. slight change, yeah. yeah, or something like that. Yeah, not a three three, but yeah, maybe like a four three or something like that. We gotta play it a little bit later. But um, yeah. So the next card uh, is Rock Slide, man, and this is like one of your buddies <laughs> right here for your for your Dark Hawk deck. I love um, Rock Slide, man. <laughs> so, so, much. so he gets he gets nerfed from a four six to a four five, which. Um, I don't know. You tell me, because I've never really used Rock Slide because I haven't had like a, a like a good use for him in a deck. So, does him getting reduced by one power uh, affect you and your uh, your Darkhawk deck? Yeah, this isn't much of an effect at all. Like, it's one mm -hmm. less power. Um, you're not going to be winning or losing games very often because of that one power. Um, because you know, what you care about is just adding power to Dark Hawk. And so this isn't affecting Dark Hawk Hawk's power. It's only right. affecting Rock Slide's power. Um, sometimes I think that Second Dinner does, you know, nerfs like this to like have a shock factor and make people like feel bad and then think to themselves like, oh, that deck must be bad now. And they just kind of stop playing it. I feel like <laughs> it may not even have a real impact, mm -hmm. but they think that there's going to be like a mental impact where people might stop playing it because it's been nerfed. People mm. just have this gut feeling that it might not be as good now. So I'll try something else. And maybe mm. like it gets people to try something else for a week just to get dark Hawk off the ladder. But if you really stop and examine like this nerf, like that this isn't much, much of anything. Yeah. This yeah. is not going to end. And anyways, I like, I play lots of dark Hawk. It's what I use to get to infinite this season. And mm -hmm. um, I played Rock Slide last night after the OTA patches, and I won just as many games. I was just as invincible, whether Rock Slide is a 4 6 before or 4 5 now. So mm -hmm. it made zero, it had zero impact. Um, because what I care about is giving your opponent blanks. Like, how sucky is it, man, when you draw a freaking rock on your turn, right? And you're looking for it that sucks. piece. Dude, what really it's sucks terrible. is when you get the freaking location. That pops off, it says shuffle rocks into your deck, and you immediately pull a rock. Like, come on, dude. What's the odds of that? Like, dude, I know. That's I the thing. Hate I hate that, dude. That's what I love about Rock Slide, even beyond like its synergy with Dark Hawk. It's just the mm -hmm. simple fact that he's giving your opponent blanks. Like, it's the worst feeling. And like, that's the thing. Like, you never really see it because, like, mm -hmm. you don't know if your opponent did draw a rock or not, but you know for certain if you did Korg. And you did rock slide in this game. There's three rocks. They got there. They bound to grab something. Yeah. <laughs> one of those turns, they're whiffing. Right? right. And like that is the worst feeling. And that's one thing that I hated about not having Dark Hawk because I didn't own Dark Hawk for the longest time. I was still don't my, own Dark Hawk. You still don't own Dark Hawk. Yeah. Is my opponent gets to play the, the, the rocks, man, and I don't. And they make my deck worse. Like it's right. almost like, okay, I can deal with, you know, Dark Hawk. I'll do whatever I have to do. Like, deal with him but when they're right. putting blanks in my deck too just for free because it's synergizes with dark hawk like that's the most frustrating i feel like it's just right off the bat i'm at a disadvantage regardless on dark hawk's power just because the opponent is putting rocks into my deck like it's the worst feeling ever so yeah. i like playing dark hawk just so i can put rocks in people's decks <laughs> that's like the best so yeah, I, I feel like they need this. like yeah, I feel like they need like a few more cards to put rocks in your deck. Do you play Black Widow in your um in your Dark Hawk deck? No. No? Because wouldn't that keep like another card in their deck until they play that that uh, that zero zero? Yeah, that, that would be a whiff, but I don't have room to put like a Black Widow in. Like I'm not gonna okay. cut Korg, I'm not gonna cut Sabu. I'm not right. gonna cut okay. like there's nothing I would cut to add her in. Um, Got you. If I was running like a more controlling deck, like, you know, 
then maybe I would consider Black Widow, but I'm mm-hmm. trying to just, uh, I, I have like, I'm trying to do point slamming. So Black Widow is really weak. She's a 2 1. So, like, gotcha. she's not really helping with my strategy of like slamming point, like, points on the board. You know? Okay. Yeah, that's understandable. She's, she's a no go. Yeah, and so then they got a they did a nerf on Enchantress uh from a four six, which is real which was like a, a good number, man, and dropping her down to four five. And it's kind of like, oh, why? You know what I mean? I, I mean, she's still gonna be played, but it's just like, why did you even touch her? Like I don't I don't know if that's gonna that like you said with with uh you know, with the uh, rock slide, like that one point's not gonna make a difference. But it, you know, it was helpful when you're, you know, trying to do numbers with like Iron Man or something like that. You know, but yeah. So here's my thoughts on like Enchantress. Like, she was good at, as a four four. I know you liked her. Mm-hmm. Like, you were a big fan of Enchantress. You were yeah. I use I use her cool as a four four for sure. Yeah, you were running her before she was cool, right? And like, uh, I thought she was good as a four four. I thought she. I thought she was supposed to be like a card that was weak but had a powerful effect and you would just use her when the meta kind of demands it right mm-hmm. like if you're playing a meta where everyone's dropping you know like taskmasters at 20 power then you're probably going to want to put shang chi in your deck you don't care that shang three shang chi's only three power right because he's killing something big on the opponent's board you don't really care about shang's power exactly. i feel like enchantress is the same like i don't really care if she's a four four or not i'm using her to shut off the dark hawk or shut off the dino right i'm using her to shut off the things that are killing me so she's getting a <laughs> yeah. lot more power back off her effect than what her power is to begin with so i didn't think she needed to be touched at all but what mm-hmm. i think second dinner did was they saw a lot of dark hawk and for some reason people just don't realize how good enchantress is i just think like for some reason no one runs her mm-hmm. and so they were trying to get this card into people's minds and so i think they did this exorbitant buff to her this four six mm-hmm. to just make her a no-brainer now so now you don't have to like decide do i want to run enchantress right now you just run her because she's already as strong as the thing right and she right. has an ability so you're already getting like a good power at a four six right and mm-hmm. then you also get her upside of her awesome effect so they wanted just people to start running Enchantress, I think, to try to nerf Darkhawk. Dude, Darkhawk has been a problem in this game, dude. Ever since he launched, he's been a problem. He used to be a 4-2 when he first launched. Then they nerfed him to a 4-1, then to a 4-0. Now they're nerfing Rock Slide. Now they buffed Enchantress. All of this. <laughs> they try opinion, to put him down. Dude, is just to stop Darkhawk. And yeah. I don't think Darkhawk will ever be out of the meta until he's a five cost card because him being four cost is what makes him so busted. You can run him with Zabu. Yeah. So it becomes a three cost freaking, four, you know, a 310, like easy, which is like one rock slide is a 310. And, mm-hmm. you know, why would anyone not run that? As long as he's four cost, he's going to be in the meta like continually. So yeah. I think they buffed Enchantress just to get people to play it to try to decrease No, they cost. nerfed they nerfed Enchantress. No, they originally buffed her to a 46 just two oh, weeks ago okay. they buffed yeah, her yeah. to a 46. Right. I was actually disappointed in that because I was really starting to really enjoy Patriot. You know, we played a little bit of Patriot, you and I. Yeah. And yeah, I was sure. enjoying Patriot and I was like, "Oh, this is like so frustrating because Oh, because now she's going to be in all the decks and yes. you're going to you're gonna get your Patriots nerfed." Yeah. She's yeah, going to yeah. be in all the decks and so you can't win. Like you literally can't win without Patriot. We're like Darkhawk still has other ways of winning. Mm-hmm. But Patriot has no way of winning really without Patriot. And I was like, this is just frustrating because everyone's going to run her now. Just auto include her because she's so strong just on her own, even without her effect, yeah. that it's going to just push out ongoing decks. And I and, and I think I was kind of proven right, but it didn't push out Darkhawk, but it pushed out the decks that needed their ongoing. It's like Patriot. So yeah. I think they noticed that, and that's why they switched it back to a 4-5, because it was just too much, dude, too much. Yeah, and then um, <laughs> so they decided to give Venom like a huge buff, man. <laughs> like... They made they made Venom. I, I thought that Venom was like a good card, like in my opinion. I, I just like really wanted Venom for like my destroyed decks just because I know you I, do. Yeah, because I wanted him just because he got to keep all of the the guy's power that he destroyed. So it's like like I hate, you know, kind of like having a bunch of stuff in a lane and then throwing um 
uh, Deathlock or whatever, or Deadlock in there, and then he destroys everything, and it's just five. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, cool, I destroyed all that stuff for Noel. That's great, but like, I want to keep some of that power. Sometimes you get lucky and throw some big shit out there or whatever, but like, at least with Venom, you know what I'm saying? You got to gobble everything up, and so you stay big in that lane, as well as you feed Noel and stuff, and they just kind of made this guy a little bad boy, you know, with, with an extra an extra two and I feel like it's just gonna go bananas. Like I haven't come across like a whole lot of um, uh, destruction decks um, within like the last you know like day. I didn't I didn't see any last night, but I feel like that's that's gonna blow up. It's gonna be on the rise, man. <laughs> like the, the the venoms and and all the the nulls and all that stuff is gonna really come out. Yeah, I think. Um... We should probably maybe we should maybe you and I like when we stream and stuff maybe revisit your 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 null deck and mm -hmm. see like if this helps it at all. But okay, like so the argument for Deathlock versus Venom, like in my opinion, before this buff, Deathlock just auto is better entirely better because think about the things you're trying to destroy. Normally, you're trying to destroy like a Bucky Barnes or like a Nova um, or maybe like some tokens, like some some squirrels. Like, mm -hmm. like, like you're killing like really little things, right? And so when you play Venom, you have to kill four power worth of stuff just for him to match Deathlock, yeah. right? So Venom is basically just like you're paying three mana to destroy stuff. He isn't mm -hmm. really doing anything himself, right? Like you're literally just paying, here's a three mana card I'm spending just to destroy stuff in my lane. He's not really pushing along your strategy. Like... Deathlock, though, when you pay the three mana, you're destroying the stuff in your lane and you're adding five power to the lane, right? So it's like, it's just it's just straight better than Venom. But Venom I, is good late game, like on the last turn, you know, where Deathlock mm -hmm. is. And when you have, like, locations filled, you can't play Deathlock now. Like, you just can't. But Venom mm -hmm. could. So Venom had the upside of being better late game. Now Venom almost is better early game and late game. So part of me yeah. wonders if you would just play... Venom over Deathlock now every time. Yeah, I I also like Venom uh as well because um with with my null deck when I was playing it, um I, I'm a I, I like to gamble. So like I'll I'll do like a deathlock and a null because I you know because whatever happened for whatever reason I ended up having a full layout and so on on one side all I got is a death lock so it's like okay shit I used Mr. Negative and I got a, a null and an Arlem Zola so what do I you know what do I gamble with okay I'll just try to put the the null in in the uh the same lane as Deathlock and then hopefully Arnim Zola will just hit null and and spread them out you know and a lot of <laughs> times like I hit I hit yeah and I, a lot of times I hit Deathlock and that bastard just goes and pops off in two lanes and destroys everything and I got bullshit in my lane but at least if I if I did it with Venom right if Venom's in the lane and then I Arnim Zola Venom He's just gobbling up everything else in the other two lanes, and I'm still big. So I liked having that as like, oh, if I got Venom over here, and I just destroyed a bunch of stuff, I can still put Venom over here and put Noel over here if I want to, and That's and, and, Zola, it, and it still it still works for me. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I'm not asked out. Yeah, but if you're using Arnim Zola, Zola, that's a terrible. much better target, a world's better target, because it's there's no downside now. You're just, right. but the bottom, the problem is you're only adding three power to each lane if you happen to hit Venom. Yeah. But, but that's better than just nuking your lane and losing, right? So, like, that's For a sure. huge difference, you know? So, yeah, I think that's a great point, man. I don't know if people are thinking of it in those terms with Arnim Zola. With, with, with Arnim Zola. But, yeah, like, being able to use Arnim Zola on Venom makes him much stronger because yeah. um, you don't lose a power in that lane. Venom's cool, too, because you if you've, like, if you've, like, almost filled that lane up and you still want to play cards in that lane, you can mm -hmm. use Venom to um, you know, <laughs> air it out a clear, little bit, clear yeah. space and not lose the power in the space. Like, right. Um, so Venom has some pretty cool utility or like when you, I hate when the opponent, you know, the problem is Venom sucks when the opponent does like a Viper and like moves like a demon or a, I was a putting hood, BS on you. Cause now side, you're yeah. losing power with Venom, right? Cause it adds that negative to him. So right. that's a little bit of boner. That's a part where Deathlock is better. Um, yeah. But Venom's true. cool. You know, on those lanes, like the rapper, location when the two raptors pop up 
You can just clear <laughs> those out. It's the same as Deathlock now. Yeah. So Deathlock would do the same thing, but now Venom can match him. So he just seems like he's better. Because if you do, you know, even if you do Bucky and this guy, it's one less power. Mm-hmm. But that you get the utility of being able to use Venom late game that Deathlock doesn't offer, I think just makes Venom like the better choice now over Deathlock. Right. Yeah, so for we, need, sure. we, need to, we need to play some games. We need to get some Venom games in, man, and see uh, how much better this guy is. He might be like <laughs> really good. Yeah, I mean, um, I definitely think uh, he'll be a good run, but I feel like there's going to be an influx of people doing destruction. And so whatever goes against destruction, you know, like uh, freaking Enchantress and, and Cosmos are just going to be running rampant out there, you know. But, yeah, uh, for sure. But uh, yeah, so then they uh they did some other stuff, right? Then they give us uh like uh reductions of locations. Yeah, they, they did. The they did. They did change the locations. Um, we can pull that up really quick. Um, yeah, they did quite a number of locations, but they were like all all shitty locations that were just gonna get uh reduced for as as often as you see them there yeah i really wanted to talk about these um locations because when i looked at the ota list i don't always remember the location names right and uh-huh. like <laughs> and what they do yeah um but these are the ones that they changed um attilan krakoa mm-hmm. la morag Plundered Castle, Sanctum Sanctorum, and Subterranean. Yeah. So, like, I think all these locations are annoying locations, right? These are locations like we all hate to see. Pop yeah. Up, right? Like, yeah, no one sure. wants to see a till, and you're like, ah, damn it. I had the cards I needed, and this damn, you know, location is going to shuffle my hand back into my yeah. deck and draw three cards, right? Or if I had five cards in my hand, like, I'm losing two cards now. Right. Yeah, that really sucks, dude. That really sucks. It's the worst, man. you know. So especially when you're running a Thanos deck and you've got like all your rocks going, you know what I'm saying? And you're getting a big hand, and then it's like, oh, all that shit gets wiped away for three. And it's like, ah, god. Yeah, and then no one likes Krakoa. Like, who likes that location? You know, like the, dude, the game dude. takes over turn five, basically just Krakoa ruins and Ego. Man, I dread seeing both of those locations when they pop out because they know, just totally. They, it's like okay, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't mind it if the AI was just smarter, but because the AI is dumb as shit, like I think the only one that's even <laughs> really like remotely any good is Agatha. No, Agatha all of them. A- um, Ego, Agatha, and Krakoa. The devs have said are are pure random. They play random. Yeah. There's no rhyme or reason Dude. to their plays. It's just pure random. I just be like, you dumb bitch. Why is you playing an ongoing card in the ongoing is not a it is is no longer going area like that that one area where it says like ongoing cards no longer uh work or something like that and it's got the smoke going down the the lane and she'll play something down there that's an ongoing card. Like why? What are you doing? Like it doesn't make any sense, right. man. At least, at least play my deck, like with some logic. Don't don't do like the dumbest shit possible. You playing a Shang Chi in a lane that got nothing. Why? Like, yeah, yeah I know because it's completely <laughs> random. It just pulls yeah, cards man, that it can play. It doesn't care what it's playing. So I'm really glad Krakoa. And from my understanding, Krakoa got um, dropped to ultra rare. So it's like less than one percent of the time you'll see it. Oh, um, just like the Starship <laughs> one, or what is that one that destroys? It's basically uh, Galactus in a location. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The World yeah. Destroyer thing. Yeah, World Destroyer. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. like uh, that's that's ultra rare as well. So is Ego. So this yeah. got this got um, rid, um, you know, pushed down to that to those guys level because no one mm. wants to see Krakoa, man. No nah, one wants dude. to see that. And then is, you have it, is Ego and ultra rare also. Yeah, Ego's an ultra rare as well. Okay, yeah. All right. That's why you barely ever see him. But yeah, we yeah. all we've all seen him. But just very rarely we see them, you know? Yeah, I hate that guy. 
And then Letragilia, um, you play a card called Shuffle Rocks into your deck. We all hate this yeah. one. That was Although another. I like seeing this as a Dark Hawk player. I exactly. I think player. that they, I think that they reduced this one because of Dark Hawk. Dark Hawk. Well, I, mean, I think that they everything, dropped that on here everything Dark in Hawk, this dude. game is about Dark Hawk, dude. I swear. Yeah. This one, and then you have Subterranea as well, right? Like Shuffle Five Rocks. That's yeah. also pro um, Dark Hawk, right? Yeah. So. Uh, last night I was playing, and I might I must have seen uh Sanctum Sanctorum quite a few times, bro. I feel like they still ain't nerfed the shit. Enough. Really? Yeah, bro. Stop. I saw I still saw that bitch too many times, man. Yeah, I can't. I was just like, ah, like or that one, or I'd have like a uh, Morag a lot too, where you you can't really? uh, you can't, you can't play, play, your play first the first card here? card here. Yeah, yeah, dude. It's like I got a deck that maybe has like. One one card, one cost card. You I know, know what I'm saying? Dude. <laughs> like, I know, dude. I, I cannot play two cards. This is the worst for Galactus, but this yeah. is okay for Thanos, right? Like, it's a good location for Thanos. Decks. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fine with Thanos, but not a I good location one for cards, uh, but... Galactus decks. This this is yeah. worse for Galactus. Um, yeah. So so, well, that sucks. You saw you still saw them. I didn't really see these at all when I was playing last night. Yeah, so. I definitely saw Morag and I saw Sanctum. But they, a lot of people say that this is kind of like a Jeff nerf as well, because mm. Jeff ignores all this stuff, right? Jeff Jeff goes where Jeff wants to go. Yeah. Shark. So Sanctum was like a good location for Jeff because you could just play Jeff into him. Right, right, right. <laughs> he just ignores it. And then you it. just win that spot, yeah. And you win that spot. So that or uh, Dr. Jeff. Doom, right? So it's kind of like, yeah, Dr. Doom is great for this location. So that these are like really, these are nerfs for things like Dr. Doom's, yeah, and Jeff's, like where you can really like play on the locations. Yeah, and sneak some wins because location RNG, but now you yeah. don't really have those those choices any longer. Yeah, I used to just like I just be hoping like I could get you know um, Wolverine out there like turn two, yeah. and then you know <laughs> and hope that I could get an RNG them. to get him to pop over there. Yeah, if I wasn't able to get Galactus, you know, going and whatnot. But yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, so I'm, this I'm is I'm good news. This is like really good news. news. These locations yeah. are terrible. No one likes them. We all have yeah, because because so. I mean I would much rather uh, a location get locked out because somebody played Professor X on me than for the location to just be locked out immediately. Like it, it gives me no opportunity to combat or have a possibility of anything. You know what I mean? At least if he got me with a Professor X, it's like damn, you drew that bitch quick, threw that out there. You know? What yeah, I mean? like I've had those games, you know, where like a bar with no name pops up and then Saint Torn pops up, and it's like. <laughs> Where are we even playing Marvel Snap at? One location? Like we can't yeah. play the game. Like how That's do we a even horrible play? Combo. That's you a know, horrible it's like terrible, combo, dude. Yeah. It's like how do we even play Marvel Snap right now? It should almost be something in there that shows that there's not two lockout locations. I agree. Or two, two locations Why can't like the system out, recognize that it has two lockouts, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It should just be that. somewhere coded in there that if you got if you've got a bar with no name, Sanctum Sanctorum and Morag can't should pop. not be there. Right, can't yeah. pop. Yeah, right. exactly, dude. I don't understand why that's not in there because that happens quite a bit where you have like two locations like you can't even play into. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. Like it's oh, like yeah. this is stupid. Yeah, at that point, um, it's just you just leave. it might as well be Galactus. It might as well be the World uh, Breaker, or whatever location. It might as well be that location because you can't play yeah. anywhere else. Yeah, you know? for sure. And then, um, uh, I think was there any other location stuff? These are all the Scroll locations, I believe. Cause there, what didn't they? Uh, oh, they just added new locations. They just, I think they added a few new, new locations or something like that. Yeah, they add a few locations every month, but right. um, I don't know where those are at. Yeah, but, uh, but um, but yeah, that's cool. So uh, let's go on to um, to the card of the the week or whatever in the store. The the new card, uh, Iron Lad. Yeah, Iron Lad. Yeah, I actually own Iron Lad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this guy, this guy went sprung for uh for Iron Lad this week, man. Yeah, um, I did. and I did. Uh, we had talked about it uh last week um when we were when we were talking about some of the cards, man, and it seemed like it would have a cool effect. Uh, you did stream, um, so if you guys haven't checked the stream out, you know, uh, go and check it out. Uh, one of the videos on there, you know, we got Iron Lad. Is is he worth it or whatnot? And um, it looked like when you can get him, like. It looks like just because you have an on revealed deck, he's just good um, to get like one of those effects again. But it seemed like a lot of times you were getting some pretty decent um, effects going with him, like with some Dark Hawk or uh, with uh, Devil Dinosaur. 
like more times than not. You know. Yeah. Like, so I primarily I run know. him with um, Dark Hawk and Double Dino, mm -hmm. um, and I kind of also really like hitting Rock Slide. Of course, Korg yeah. isn't too bad. I don't mind hitting Korg. Yeah. So like those are the cards I really like hitting. Um, and yeah, it's shocking how frequently you hit Devil, Dino, and Darkhawk. I'm actually surprised how frequently you hit them. But that was kind of like one of the things that I learned about Iron Lad is that it's not something you can depend on. Mm. Like you, like you, like you can't depend on him hitting what you need for like a so clutch. He's kind of yeah, he's kind of like a gamble to be honest. Yeah. Like you, you would think like, oh, I'll just make my deck so like every card he hits is good. That's true, but there's always a card you wish he hits. Right? Like in every situation when you're playing, you're like, yeah, I made my deck so every card is good, but I don't want it to hit a certain card. Even though like every card is good, I don't want it to hit a certain card, right? Like right. I want it to hit this specific card. And so you end up feeling like, damn, dude, like I don't even know if I want to play this guy right now because I need a specific card right now. And I have no guarantee he's going to get that for me. So I just feel like I'm gambling and hoping that he wins the game for me. He just, he gives me that feeling when I play him. So mm -hmm. sometimes he kind of feels a little bad when you play him. So that's kind of odd. Mm. And then also, believe it or not, I've lost games because of Iron Lad. Really? So there was one game, yes. There was one game <laughs> where I um, I played a Moon Girl and I copied Mystique. Mm -hmm. And then I had Quinjet. And I think it was like a limbo game, so I went to turn seven. Yeah. And so I think like I played like um, Iron Lad. He was like at three or two, and then like Mystique, Mystique, Iron Lad, mm -hmm. and like two Mystiques. And I had played Dark Hawk the previous turn, so I used my Mystiques to copy Dark Hawk, and then I used my second Mystique to copy this Mystique, which had copied mm -hmm. Dark Hawk, and so I had <laughs> two Dark Hawks. <laughs> You had three Dark Hawks out there. I had three Dark Hawks on the board. And then I played Iron Lad for my third card. Uh -huh. And he, my Mystiques were kind of low in power. They were like a six power. And I was like fine with that because it was like 12 power. I put two Mystiques into the lane, right? So it was like 12 power. I was dropping in yeah. the lane and the opponent had like one slot. I was like, there's nothing they could possibly drop here to beat 12 power, right? Mm -hmm. I had priority. So I played Iron Lad. Iron Lad freaking copied Rock Slide. So added two mm. rocks into the opponent's deck. You think, well, that's why is that bad? Because mm. my opponent played Shing in that lane, assuming I played something big there. And my Enchantresses grew two power to 10. Oh, both died to Shing. Damn. And I lost the lane. Damn. So I was like, damn, dude, Iron Lad just lost me. The it just so of, happened to. Because it just so happened to hit Rock Slide. It was like the worst feeling ever. That's just like, bad oh. luck. Yeah. So that's just pure <laughs> luck. But see, something like, you know. Uh, it's because you had Pryo. If you didn't have Pryo, you would have gotten And then that. Pryo that screwed me. But something like White yeah. Queen would never do that to me. Right. Like White yeah. Queen would never have an RNG swing like that. Or yeah. like <laughs> Iron Lad does. But Iron Lad's upside is so high, you take the good with the bad, right? Like you kind of just like you have the situations where he might ruin the game for you. But yeah, then, like, what like, are the odds? What are the odds? But he wins you a lot of games, man. Like, he wins you a lot of games, too. So you did the good with the bad. But I always tell people, like, if you want to watch, I did the deck profile on our channel. So if you go to Snap Squad and check out the uh, what I believe is the best deck in the game, I believe that this is the best deck in the game. And I'm not just saying that, like, facetiously. Like, I really mean that. I'm not clipping. With I'm not Iron Lad in it or just Doc Hawk? Hawk? Well, with Iron Lad in it. But I, I, I mentioned in that video that I do feel that you could easily – remove Iron Lad and just put in White Queen and mm -hmm. see just as much success. So mm -hmm. this is the deck I would recommend everyone play when Dark Hawk drops to Series 3, which is going to be like next week. Um, okay. He's going to drop to Series 3 or 2, and then every one of these cards are Series 3 or lower. Mm -hmm. So this is not a hard deck to make if you cut Iron Lad for White Queen. And you'll see a lot of success with White Queen um, just as much, to be honest. I was playing this deck without Iron Lad, before mm -hmm. Iron Lad dropped, and I was kicking major butt. Um, just because Mystique is so good, man. Mystique and Zabu yeah. and Quinjet. Like, no one sees Mystique coming. Like, no one calculates Mystique. One of my favorite things to do is just play, like, Dark, is play, like, Devil Dino, and then mm -hmm. turn six, play Mystique, and, like, Dark Hawk. Because, <laughs> like, Dark Hawk will be three because of Zabu, and Mystique is three. Yeah. 
Right. So that's so much power, dude. Like in the yeah, very yeah. last turn, or if I copied Mystique with um, Moon Girl, I just double Mystique off my double Dino, right? Yeah. And then play like a Sentinel yeah. or something. Like it just like Mystique is easily, easily my one of my favorite cards, and the reason why I think this deck is so much better than the other decks that are out there right now because she just like she slams points out of nowhere for such a mm -hmm. cheap, cheap cost. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely jelly. Um, I want freaking Dark Hawk, and I've been trying to go for him, but I just haven't had the luck yet. Um, I don't even know, like, out of out of the cards that I've popped in the um in the uh the collector's reserves, if I've like, when's the last time that I got a uh series four? A series four, like a Tuma's not a series four, right? No, not anymore. Well, it depends on when you pulled him. He was uh, at one point. I pulled him right like I pulled him like maybe like last like this week or last week, something like that. Oh, then he was series three then. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Atuma was the last card that I got. And then I got like uh Luke Cage, you know, uh Hell Carrier. That one's a, a series three, I know for sure. Hazmat's got to be a look series three. At the, um, we can look at the Series 4 cards here. Yeah, because you said it was like a certain period of time when... Um, that yeah, we're going to look at We can look at that next, but here's all the Series 4 cards. So yeah. um, I don't know if you know which one of these you have. Uh, I do have uh, Zabu and Sauron. Um, I don't have Silver, Dazzle. Uh, I think I have... I might have Sentry. I might not. I probably don't have Sentry. Let me see. I don't have Sentry. I know that. I don't think I have Sentry. Let me see. Yeah, no, I don't have Sentry. Uh-uh. I don't have Sentry. And then uh, go go down some. Uh, I've got Modok. The last one, the last uh, four that I got was Stature then. Oh, you I have had, Stature? I, yeah, I just got Stature like maybe... Like two or three weeks ago, something like that. Like probably okay, like two. So weeks you ago. should probably get, be getting close to a four, a four series four soon. Okay, yeah. I got no like mad early, dude. <laughs> I must have got, got no, him when he was, it was series like a five. five maybe. Yeah, yeah I got no. I've had. I, no, I, I actually time. pulled stature when she was five. Oh, okay. Um, nice. She's the only five series five card I've ever pulled from a box. Mm. Um, but she wasn't even that good. Now she's all good, but of course it's with Darkhawk. <laughs> mm. Everyone runs statue with Dark Hawk. Okay. So like, but you didn't have statue in your Dark Hawk deck. Your Dark Hawk deck. No, it's you? a different deck. People run. It's this one here. The okay. deck people run is this is the one everyone says is the best deck. Uh -huh. Is this um, statue black okay. hole? And you freaking buy death too, huh? <laughs> uh, but I don't play them. I, don't, I, I, I kind of regret buying them. I kind of regretted buying Jeff. Mm. I wish I had those tokens back. Yeah, I got because three reserves right now. I'm just waiting to to pop. I, I always pop. wait till I have four. You should wait till you have four because then you probably guarantee yourself a series three. Mm, Every time maybe. you open four, you should get a series three. Card. I think the last time that I opened four, I didn't get shit. I got like avatars and I got an avatar, uh, gold uh, tokens and credit. That's <laughs> what so I got. I didn't get a card, but I try to wait until I have five because if I do five, then I know I'm getting a card at least. It's weird. Like I really like Mystique with this base gray background, dude. <laughs> I don't want to like upgrade it. I don't want to like upgrade her. Well, I mean, you've already upgraded that sucker twice, so it's like to keep <laughs> yeah. it for his but it's like time. I like the gray background. It's interesting because like I, didn't I thought good with the gray I was background. hoping that you could just keep upgrading the shit, and then it would just get like more spectacular. Like it, it kind of does. Like, it kind of does, things. but. Um, I, I won't upgrade her all the way until I have 144 or whatever it is to do like a full split. Mm. And then I will upgrade her. Because I like the way she's like the card looks right now. It's really cool you. right now. Um, yeah. But um, but yeah, man. So let's look at the uh the list of uh of the cards for this month that's coming out. Yeah, the series drops. Yeah, yeah, the series drops. So we got we got uh, May. Right. And so Iron Lad just launched. So that means next week, 
um, we're going to get Howard the Duck, or maybe it's like early next week. I don't know the exact day that these things drop on. Yeah, it says but like Howard the Duck. Days from now, I think, is when it'll change. How many days from now does it say on there? Six? Let me see. Let me be sure. Sorry, no, three days. Three days. Okay, so, so it must be every Monday then. Tuesday or whatever, Monday. Yeah. Tuesday night or yeah, Monday night. Must be when they launch. Yeah, I think it is Monday nights. Yeah, it's Monday nights no. for us here in uh, SoCal. It's Monday nights. So Monday night, they will launch Howard the Duck, um, which is a pretty cool card. Um, when he's on the board, he lets you click the top card. He lets you click on him, and and he shows you the top card of your deck. And so um, I, I thought there was a really great comparison someone made to him. That he's kind of like King the Conqueror. In the sense that um, you can kind of see what you're going to get and kind oh, of and snap. <laughs> and snap, yeah, or or retreat or retreat. But like you, right, you can right. kind of like see the future, right? Kind of like yeah. how King like kind of you see the future. Like Howard the Duck is kind of doing something similar to that, but he's letting you do it every turn. Yeah. So that was kind of intriguing to me. Um, I think someday I'm not going to spend tokens on him. I'm not going to spend three thousand tokens on him, or of course six thousand tokens. But on you him. might play him. But when he drops to series three, I might you know. Give him a shot and see, you know, like if he's good, or I'll watch some reviews yeah. on him. But there's no way that I'm going to spend 6K on this guy. I I, I advise um, if anyone's watching this to not buy Howard the Duck for 6K. Um, if he if he turns out to be good, then then maybe. But I would. This is a card I would at the very very minimum wait. Just wait and see. Mm. Um, yeah. So few people. Are yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's kind of like a, a like a niche little thing. Like I'd have to see. Like you'd have to spend the six k on Iron Lad this week, right? And then you'd have to gather up an, another six k for Howard the Duck next week, to be able to like really utilize Iron Lad properly. Like, oh yeah, Dark Hawk is on top, so boom, Iron Lad. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I I don't know like what other instances. I mean, I guess it'd be like cool to know, you know. But like, I don't know what and what other instances where it would just be like super broke. Um, just to, basically to, Iron Lad yeah. and Jubilee, right? And then also just oh, yeah, let you know if you should snap or not. I think those are really his primary utilities. Um, yeah. Other than that, he doesn't got much use. And he's a weak one, too. You know, like he's not adding much power to the board. Like he's not doing a whole yeah, lot. Yeah, I feel like they got to, for these new cards, they kind of, they got to give him like a really wicked ass ability or they got to give him a little bit more power. You know what I mean? Just like yeah. something that'll make you want to like play the card. Cause I feel like the only people that are going to buy this are like the YouTubers that, that got like mad, <laughs> mad coinage to, you know, to just buy every card that that's new that comes out so that they can, you know, have the relevant topics and stuff like that. But like, yeah, I totally agree. The regular like, players, no man, I'm like, this. I'm not gonna buy that. Yeah, I'm gonna just wait. I'm just Dude, wait that one. It's out. amazing. It's amazing though. Like the difference between it being a one two and a one three. I feel like if this was a one three, dude, his value would like Might skyrocket. Like, huh? Yeah, you think like, that one, one three, three is gonna help it? It needs to be a one dude, four, bro. Honestly, it needs no, to be a one, one four. three. Is good. I used to run Blade, um, just because he was a one three. And I would just play him on turn six. So I wasn't playing him on any other turn but turn six just really? because he's a one three, which is, yeah, just on turn six only because oh. I wasn't trying to do a discard deck. So I would just play oh, him okay. on turn six when I, you know, when the game's over and, I, and there's no reason to have a hand anymore. Um, I would play mm -hmm. Blade on turn six. Um, you know, I was playing Rocket Raccoon too just because there's a chance of him being a, a, a one four. But if he was just a one three base, I would probably play. I wish they had a one three base vanilla card. But they don't like the only. The, I guess they think like a one two is the base vanilla card, which is Misty Knight. Mm. But I always oh, felt okay. like that'd be still cool if they had like a, a thing version of like a one three. Um, mm -hmm. It's a crazy just how adding that one singular power to like a one cost makes it like so much better. Like mm. zero you know, is they might, strong because he's a one three. They just might add a, a extra point to do when they realize that he ain't getting no play. They might add just that extra point on him. Just that'd be sick. It would make know? me want to buy it. Honestly, I'd probably run him in every deck. Really, if he was yeah. a one three, I'd probably auto include him in like every deck. I'd probably include him over Nebula, maybe. Like, oh yeah, that's how Dude, strong he'd be. I've know? played, I've played Nebula, man, and she honestly don't be getting that big. Like most of the times, it's like okay, I might play her. And then, like, they'll just kill her pretty quickly with Killmonger, or they'll, um, 
you know, they'll they'll end up playing in the location. Uh or um a lot of times like it just I don't get her until like later in the game. And then it's like irrelevant to have it in my in my my pocket, you know, because it's a one one. You know what I mean? I feel like if she was maybe like a one two or possibly like a one three, she would be oh, a lot hey. better. But no, like like hear me out. Hear me out though. Hear me out though, right? I know, like, oh, if she's a one three, she's gonna climb like high as fuck. But that's okay because you got you got dudes like Shang Chi that can wipe her off the map. You have Killmonger that can just take her out quick, quick as hell. Like, yeah, but, it, but you only spent one problem. mana. You only spent one energy on her. Like, yeah, I'm using my Shang Chi to kill your one energy card. What about what about the cards you played on turn five? What about the cards you played on turn four, like your bigger cards? I have to use Shang on the one card, the one drop you played turn one? Like, well, there's no the, way, the, man. That's too strong for a one drop. The great thing about Shang-Chi is if you throw any, anything else in there that's big, it's all getting knocked down. Shang-Chi. But you're not going to be throwing anything else in there that's big because she's carrying the lane for you. I'd be, throwing, I'd be throwing heavy shit in there, too. but Well, uh, right now you kind of do because she needs a little help. She can't really win on her own. But heavy. she wins it on her own if you play her with Storm. Like she's sick with Storm, or she's sick with Professor X, right? Yeah, but but okay, so Professor X, it just takes so long to get Professor X out there. Well, I'm it, saying like, if you're playing like a like a uh, like a Thanos deck where you're like using Time Stone to like cheat him out on turn four, she's gonna yeah. grow four power. You're adding four power by doing that. Like, I think that's pretty strong. I don't know. I think she's really strong. Yeah. Um, I don't know if she's objectively better than Sunspot. But I'll tell you what, man, like when I was playing lots of Sunspot, I really missed that mm -hmm. one power when they nerfed him to a 1-0. Because there'd be lots yeah, of yeah. times where like I'd be on turn six and I have one mana to use, but there's no point in And it doesn't Sunspot make no point in dropping him, yeah. At least Nebula still has a reason you can play her like on turn six. There's at least one point of power there where they completely robbed that from Sunspot. So Nebula, I think, yeah. is the best one drop maybe in most cases right now. Um but I mean, yeah, she can be played around. I'm surprised how well she's been played around. Actually, like she she hasn't been like that oppressive. I thought she'd be a little mm -hmm. more oppressive than she is. But like right. I said, even her just ticking up one time, which she's like guaranteed. She's basically guaranteed to tick up one time if you play her turn one. If you play her turn yeah, one, if you she's play her, if you can play her turn one, one yeah, for sure. Because I think turn anything, two will tick, could... two, three, four, five, and six will tick. So that's five mm -hmm. ticks, but your opponent can only play four cards. So like if you play her turn one, she's guaranteed to be a one three, a one right? Three, yeah. But if she becomes a one five, that's extra premium. There isn't any one five mm -hmm. in the game except for like uh, Titania, and she's got like you know she's difficult to play with Titania. She got the so it's like some weird parts. yeah that weird mechanic where if you play a card and she switches sides, where Nebula is just a free one five. Like so, I think Nebula is a really strong, really strong card. But yeah, she's mm -hmm. not as like oppressive as you might first think when you first when you first saw her. Yeah, uh, for sure. Like, I mean, I think I think if she got uh if she got her ability off rip, like let's say, let's say like if you oh, drop turn you played her too. It's, it's too yeah, strong, if she man. got it on the turn, that'd be really nice. But like it'd be it'd be it would also still be uh countered because you know, like if you dropped a card in the, the same field that she was getting dropped at. It wouldn't pop off, but if it was an empty field, then boom, she pops off instantly. Yeah, I know. You know this is why. This is why I say here's a pro tip for everyone listening. A uh, pro tip on Nebula is if you have her turn one, always play her into the location that is visible, because um, the opponent has a high. Most people are going to play into a location they can see, rather in, than into a blind location. Because there's that risk, you know, getting miniature labs or something like that and getting screwed in a blind location. So people mm -hmm. usually play. Usually if they have a, a one drop, they play it into the um, visible location turn one. Play Nebula there. Because if you play Nebula there and your opponent plays a one drop there as well, then she'll be even she'll be a, a one five guaranteed. Because now the opponent can only play three cards in that location to slow her down. Um, mm -hmm. If you play her into a, a, a blank lane, um, that your opponent doesn't play into, then you give them the opportunity to play four cards into that lane, um, which lets her only tick up once. So you want to play her usually into the lane that is revealed and not into the mm -hmm. unrevealed lanes because the opponent is probably not going to play into the unrevealed lanes. They're going to be, it's going to, it's more likely going to be played into the revealed lane. So play Nebula 
turn one into the reveal lane. That's the yeah, best strategy sure. for her. Uh, okay. Anyways, so moving on to and, High Evolutionary, which has been confirmed to be a big bad. Well, he is confirmed to be the big bad. Confirmed. Okay. Yeah. All right, he wasn't really that big and bad in the uh in the Marvel the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, but all right, we'll go with it. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I think the reason why is because I know that a lot of people are saying that like he's not really much of a big bad in comparison to like Thanos, you know, and Kane, yeah. who are like seriously right. powerful dudes. Um, but he has the dopest effect, man. He's like a Thanos, like he's a he's his own archetype, like. He, he 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 alone that one card is like a deck mm -hmm. right like that's what's cool like that's what thanos is like right you put thanos in your deck and you got like a whole special unique deck that no one right, else right. has you got extra like uh, extra yeah six cards just and just stuff. being one card and thanos is just one card but he like changes he's like his own special deck that's what high evolutionary is and i think that's why they made him a big bad because mm -hmm. he's like a, a, a one one of on his own archetype you know and so um, he's going to be a lot of fun. I recommend people getting him, but at the same time, everyone's going to get him because he's a big bad. So everyone knows that they're yep. the best way to spend your tokens. You guarantee, you know, no depreciation. <laughs> you yeah. know, so everyone gets the big bads. Um, so everyone's going to run this. I have a feeling, dude, when this guy launches, it's going to be, it's like, gonna be everywhere. Every every game is going to be a freaking high evolutionary mirror match, man. Like, ugh. Yeah, the only Everyone thing that I wish, movie. the only thing that I wish it did was I wish that effects were random, that they weren't like it wasn't like a guaranteed set of effects for cards that didn't have abilities. That oh, like these cards get that. Like I wish it was like a pot of abilities, and like boom, all the cards now have new abilities. And it's just it's just all random. So you might get a dark hawk ability in there. You might get a, a hit monkey ability in there in one of them cards. You might get a an Iron Man ability or something like that. You know what I mean? But like I, I just wish that he really uh evolved like all those cards. And then it would be really dope if like you could uh incorporate like Sauron or something like that. So that mm -hmm. cards didn't have abilities when you played it. So then it really changes the game. Like you can have like the problem is a bunch though, of the problem cards. is the problem RNG that shit. Is, no, the problem is they have to, they, they 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 have to develop those abilities. <laughs> like that's a lot of work on their end to like come up with like multiple different <laughs> abilities to well, no, they could just card, use, right? They could just use all the abilities that they already have in the pot that they've already oh created. Oh, you mean use existing abilities? Yeah, yeah, just use exi existing abilities, but like put them out there. You know what I'm saying? So no that one, you just no one, got, you just got big ass RNG on your shit. No one would want to play that card because there's no there's no way to Too know random? if it's gonna be a good deck or, good, or not. Yeah, there's no way to know if like this is gonna be a good deck <laughs> think, or not. Dude. I think that would give it a little <laughs> spice. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> you could just like you could change the whole shit. You know, you like oh, I <laughs> no one would want this card, card, man. No if I like the power card. of a card, you know, but I don't want the, you know, I, I don't want like, you know, the, the basic ability or whatnot, you know what I mean? Maybe I have a chance of getting like a really good ability with this, with this four, six thing, you know, I get, I get four, six thing. And then thing also has devil dinosaur power. So it's like, I actually think that, um, I actually think that high evolution is going to be really cool with, um, Thanos. And I think like all you run in High Evolutionary mm -hmm. is basically like what is it? Is it Abomination? I think yeah, Abomination. His effect becomes cost one less for every card um, on your opponent's side. You've decreased by one power. So Ooh, you just so play Soulstone. Um, yeah, Soulstone. So mm -hmm. basically, Soulstone on its own basically makes Abomination cost like zero or one. Like so, just adding high blue well, Abomination is a six nine, really nine right? No, Abomination is a five nine. <laughs> Abomination is a five nine. Yeah. Really? So if you've oh, decreased geez. your opponent just by four cards, but just the Soul Stone only, it'll be a one nine. Mm -hmm. And then if you did, if you'd be able to get a fifth card decreased somehow, it would be a zero a zero nine. <laughs> which is um, like, is it is it just cool. your opponent's cards? Yes, your opponent's cards. Or is it any cards decreased? Your opponent's cards. Do you get hazmat that, bro? 
So you can even do um, you can even do um, wasp because the wasp, the new effect wasp is. Wasp I think wasp down. becomes so busted with high evolutionary. <laughs> wasp is <laughs> yes, she's wasp a zero one, dude. She's a zero one, so she costs no yeah. mana, and she's giving you one power, and she decreases the power on two cards in your opponent's side for zero mana. Talk about a one three. Yeah. Now, how I was just talking yeah, about, I wish good, you know, I could get a one three, dude. She's a zero three. Like that's so busted, man. Like you can just run that yeah. and like basically, you know, abomination in your uh -huh. Thanos deck, and you've already made your Thanos deck better, in my opinion. Like yeah, and you could run like sure. Lockjaw, so you can even put her in the Lockjaw. So you play her in the Lockjaw. She 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 nukes the board for minus one on her side, and then she replaces herself with something. Like that's super <laughs> super strong, man. Like yeah, I mean with uh with high evolutionary um being like one of the new cards that's coming out and then you know and the store actually allowing you to buy the new card um before i had locked canyon and i had had canyon on the uh the series four series five uh buy uh for like almost like two weeks now and whatnot and i was just saving up tokens to get it and uh and then when I saw that, you know, they had like the store so you could, you know, you could buy Iron Lad and all those. I'm like, mm -hmm. damn, like Kang is cool. Right. And I wanted to get him just because he was a big bad. And, you know, and it's like, you know, mm -hmm. one of the one cards that you'll spend like the 6K on or whatever. But like if there's a possibility of another big bad coming out and I can get him like I would more I would more so play high evolutionary than I would Kang. I feel totally. like Kang is like. A cool that was card, a smart decision, like, man. Or, that was a smart decision. Uh, you know, like a little, a little, you know, niche deck or whatever that I wouldn't really play like that. But high evolutionary, you know, what I mean, that could be more fun than Kang would, because I'd be trying Absolutely. to think about like, okay, what can I take out of my deck to put Kang in? You know what I mean? Whereas high evolutionary is just literally just a deck on its own. You know, the exactly. only problem is, exactly. is that I feel like you're you're just gonna have like the set amount of cards. You know what I mean? Because high evolutionary has like the card, I think it's I think it's more than more than seven uh cards that he has, right? Isn't like how many cards is it that he, he's able to change? Like how many vanilla cards are there? Is there like 12, Let's see. 14? Let's see, no ability. Um he can change he changes shocker, mm -hmm. he changes wasp. He Brute changes... has an ability. Why is that in there? Because his little broodlings oh, have ability. Okay. Got you. So Those are what I think should be altered these. by evolutionary also. I think like all of the spawns the squirrels? Should, should be. A little like yeah, uh, souped up stuff. squirrels, dude. <laughs> a little souped yeah. up squirrels. <laughs> Just like Rocket Raccoon, you know. A little Rocket one threes. Yeah. yeah dude, dude. So basically it's going to be Shocker, Wasp, mm -hmm. Misty, Abomination, Hulk, Cyclops, Thing. So quite a few cards, man. Yeah, quite a quite a yeah, few cards. Sure. Yeah, so I mean, I guess you'll have like a couple of other cards to to put in there to kind. I of think this is the one that. though that's gonna really like be game changing, man, for sure. Like getting a one nine, one nine? Or a zero nine is like <laughs> so OP. Yeah. Do I you think you throw a moon? Uh, oh, you can even happened? moon girl, moon girl, yeah, for sure. Moon girl, moon that girl. thing. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, that'd be great. Imagine that, dude. Like. You played, you know, Wasp. You played, I think, Cyclops. And then you've decreased, you know, your opponent's board by like four or five cards have been, you know, nerfed. And then mm -hmm. you have She-Hulk. And you play Moon Girl. And you copy two She-Hulks and two Abominations, man. Dude, that's a <laughs> lot of power turn six. So you skip turn yeah. five. Like, entire, you just skip turn five. And then you just mm -hmm. play freaking abomination, two abominations and two she hulks. Dang, man, dude, like, that's that's crazy, man. Yeah, like you're gonna be and I, able I think, to do that. Moon girl's gonna I be doubling abomination be a lot, huh? I think it would be kind of fun to play uh, Thanos in that deck, but you might might not want Thanos just because of all the ones that are in there, I and mean, it would help you draw some of that stuff out, but. Yeah, I think I think it's gonna be really good just because Soulstone synergizes so well with uh, this decreased power stuff. So yeah, uh, maybe I'm you uh, maybe put Killmonger in there just to to like eradicate the stones so that they're not like cluttering up the way. You know, 
Like you, you could just do don't Killmonger. Play. You could do Killmonger. Killmonger yeah. and I then think like uh, Wasp becomes so much better. So you're gonna play Lockjaw, probably Lockjaw for sure. So you can go Lockjaw Wasp or Lockjaw into your one drops. And then the mm-hmm. Wasp is gonna be so cool because she's gonna nuke the board for minus two and then replace herself. So you actually you get some <laughs> value other than just replacing herself, right? Like you actually yeah, yeah, you yeah. do minus two and you can do her twice. Herself. And yeah. you can do her <coughs> Yeah, exactly. <coughs> you can do her multiple times. So high evolutionary is gonna be gonna be what's up, but everyone's gonna play it. <laughs> yeah. Literally everyone. And then uh for that last one, Living Tribunal. That one, yeah. that one's a really interesting one, man. Um, to be able to like, to like even out your your uh your power across all three locations, that one might be kind of fun because you know just imagine adding that into like uh, a destruction deck, you know, and make it no like as big as shit, and then throwing tribunal on there so that all that power just gets spread out you know if you can get if you can get them both yeah out he's there. fascinating dude i can't peg this guy i can't tell if he's great or terrible yeah they did buff him though he was like a six four and they buffed him to a six six mm. um he is really fascinating honestly i don't know what to make of tribunal he could be dope like he got i guess he got a little nerf too like nerfing Sanctorum and Plundering Castle, he would really throw oh, lots of power into those locations. Oh, right? oh yeah, being able to right? locations you can't yeah. touch. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so like he he's kind of neat that way. But um, the way he works is like if you have like only one power left over, then you lose it. But if you have two power left over, you get you you gain a power. So he rounds yeah. down if you only have one power left over, and then he rounds up if you have two power left over. So like let, let's say you had 13 power on board, then he would spread mm-hmm. four, four, four. Right? That right. that 13th power would just be gone. But if you had yeah. uh 14 power, right, then it would go um four, 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 five, 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 it would round up to 15. Right, you would get you'd mm-hmm. actually give you one additional power. Right. Oh, okay. So that's the way he works. Um if anyone's curious about that. But mm-hmm. yeah, you'd really want to put this guy in a massive point slam deck. So like maybe even mm-hmm. my Dark Hawk Dino. Um, uh, but you're using your turn six, you know, to play him out and he's only adding two power to each location. So that's kind of like yeah. making him like a uh Mr. Fantastic. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it's like he's six a, power. Like a really but he's good basically Mr. just a Mr. Fantastic, right? He's basically just a Mr. Yeah. Fantastic. It's funny. Yeah. Yeah, because he's gonna spread your shit thin for sure. Yeah, that's interesting, man. He's a really super interesting for sure. So we'll have to see what that guy's about. I mean, I know people are gonna are gonna buy him. Uh see, he should be a big bad, right? Because he's like in the in the Marvel world, he's a big bad. <laughs> like he's like yeah. you know, a galaxy wielding, you know. You know, guy, High Evo is like pretty weak sauce, but it's just because the deck he makes is unique that makes High Evo so sick. Yeah, yeah. Do you think are you gonna buy any of the uh, the Ghost Spider stuff, like Spider Pig and and Spider Man? It's a move. It's like move decks, right? I don't know it's if I move. Will, I'm not deck. a big fan. Yeah. yeah, I'm not a big fan of move, mm-hmm. but um, but I mean, I'm I, I'm gonna have tokens to spend, right? Like. You're getting, you're getting no matter what, like one card a month. So you're it's getting like, ghost spiders. Yeah, you're gonna yeah, get, yeah, and, yeah. You, and you're getting ghost spiders. So it's like I'll, I'll buy one of these probably. Um, yeah, I don't know. Which I think one uh, these, Spider but. Ham, I, I believe, just moves a, a a card that's at that location, one of your enemy's cards, to a different location. Oh yeah, you can move one of your enemy's cards. That's pretty strong. Yeah, so that's like, like that. that's like having a. But I think a it's juggernaut. random, right? Like I think it just randomly moves one, like Stegron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just it just. Dude, moves how one. Just, you know when you have like a move card like the uh, Space Stone and like the cards like <laughs> they like float. Imagine yeah, yeah, yeah. if like you played Spider Pig and then like your opponent's board started floating and you could slide a card where you wanted it to go. <laughs> how tight yeah, would that, that would be? be cool. Where you could move one of your point, like you actually are moving it, like oh yeah, man, like you like see, you you card. see the options of the cards that yes, float up, up to and move, and you like, move one. one, yeah, like, oh, yeah, 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 that would be so sick, dude. Yeah. yeah, I feel like you would probably use that 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 Spider Ham, and then use uh you know like Shadow King, or not Shadow King, but um uh 
Kingpin. So when they move to oh, that yeah, location, Kingpin. Kingpin yeah, spell like it turns, turn, right you're right, like turn six, just play yeah. Spider Pig to move your opponent out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but dude, uh, sure. but yeah, we'll definitely talk about those uh next month when those those all come out. Yeah, we'll talk and, about uh, that next next time. Yeah. When we get, I might I might get Spider Man twenty ninety nine. I don't know about I don't know about Spider Ham. Maybe I get him. It's a good one. It's a, a one one card that could give you a few options, but yeah, I don't know. But uh, but yeah, man. So let's talk about uh, you know, you well, you had talked about your your deck, um, that you were playing uh was mostly Darkhawk, and you managed to get up to Infinite, and uh, and you've been utilizing Iron Lad in that deck, right? Ever since you bought Iron Lad, you've just kept it. Yeah, in that deck. He's, I've kept it in it. Yeah, yeah. Even though he lost me that game once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, one time isn't isn't really much of a big deal. Um, you know, because it's gonna happen. You know, sometimes RNG is just a, a bitch. You know, but uh, you know, you <laughs> yeah, it. that's a cruel mistake. But, yeah. but um, but yeah. So I'm. I mean, I was like, I'm. I'm like really tempted in trying to to buy Iron Lad. Uh, but at the same time, like I don't even have Darkhawk, so I'd like be getting it, and I wouldn't even really like be able to like utilize it to that full extent. I mean, I guess I'd get it eventually, but. I don't know. I I don't think that in two weeks I'd be able to get uh, another six k tokens to be able to get high evolutionary, and so because that would give me the chance to just get a big bad off rip without having to wait for it to cycle through the store and whatnot. I think I just want to wait for that, you know, and possibly wait and see if maybe I catch Iron Lad in the shop on the four five. Yeah, because you're probably gonna have six k before Iron Lad leaves the shop, most likely. Yeah, Cause yeah, because like, I only like, need uh, seven hundred, so I'm yeah, probably, so probably if I probably like, opened up one of these three cases, probably has like three or four hundred tokens in it, and then you know, by the time I complete, you know, next week's uh, list of stuff, you know what I mean? Like I'm gonna yeah. get, I'm gonna get more tokens. But you don't think that two weeks will be enough time to rebuild your collection tokens to get the uh, big bad? I don't think so. That's what's so. That's what's so like tough because like. It's really cool that Iron Land is just sitting there on the shop and you don't have to pin it. But like mm-hmm. he'll move over to the Series 5 shop and you gotta wait till he comes up again. Right? right. Like if you wanna get him, you have to wait till he appears again. Yeah, that's exactly. what's like that's like what's so tempting about wanting to try to like buy him now. Yeah. Because you know, you don't know when he'll come up again, you know, in your rotation. Uh yeah, and then you don't really see people like I, I still haven't come across anybody who used Iron Lad against me. So it's really scarce. The people that are using Iron Lad. Yeah, no one's buying it. No one's buying it because they're all saving their tokens like you, man. For high <laughs> gotcha. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Talking about like, evolution. You're gonna see everyone freaking playing high high uh, evolutionary, man. Gosh, like, that's suck. Yeah. Yeah, like literally the whole world, dude. Man, um, man. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a good it's a good uh it's a good card, man. Um it is, uh, it's a strong card. I really like him. He does occasionally win you some games. Yeah. It's just like a tie variant. Sometimes he's just okay, and then sometimes like he's really good, and then very, very rarely he's bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. And um, and me currently, um, I've been playing. I I like you know I tried to play like some decks, and I was like, oh, let me throw like Nebula in there and run with Nebula and stuff. And um, I wasn't really having like great luck, so I was like reducing my score, you know, because I started off at seventy. Um, and, and then I was going down to like 68 and I was like, dude, bump this man. Like <laughs> I need to get back up. So I'd go like, I'd go back to my Galactus deck, you know what I'm saying? And get myself <laughs> back up or I'd use like Thanos. And so like, basically I had, I had put in my Galactus deck, I took out Yondu and I put a uh, Nebula in just to see, you know, like if that would be like a cool swap. You know what I mean? Because I'm just I'm destroying all that shit anyway, so it doesn't really matter, you know. But it's that fact that Yondu just takes one more card out of their deck, you know that that makes it so like Yondu is like you got to You got well, and it. also adds it to Null, right? Like that's what's good. Yeah, about and it adds it to you're Null. adding the power to Null, where Nebula isn't doing that. So right, I would right. definitely run Yondu in the Galactus deck over Nebula for sure. Yeah, it just it just sucks because it's there's like certain things where it's like really easy to spot. 
you know, like if you got Yondu, it's like, okay, he's either running destruction or he's running. Yeah. <laughs> so, you're kind of giving away your strategy. Yeah, like no one's yeah, really running Yondu, Yondu except and, Galactus. And you don't want to <laughs> hold, you don't want to hold Yondu. You want to throw Yondu out first turn because you want to destroy yeah. something good as early yeah, as possible. Absolutely. If you good. save it, he's already got all his good shit in his hand. You and never that's early. Yeah. You never yeah, hold Yondu. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, then I decided to put her into my uh, Thanos deck, my Thanex deck, and um, and she actually is like okay in there. Like she doesn't necessarily add anything, but she doesn't really take away. Um, I'm trying to think of what I took out for her, and I can't remember because I did it so long ago. Did so, you did you pull a one cost from your deck? I believe I pulled a one cost. Yeah, you pulled, I pulled out something Ant-Man? Out this one. Ant-Man's yeah, yeah, the only one cost. I'm, at, I'm I pulled out Ant Man for for her because it was like uh, huh. a lot of times where that's I don't an interesting know. swap, but I don't like that decision. Yeah, I mean, I don't uh, like it because you made your spectrum weaker. That's true because, oh, because, because she doesn't Nebula have the ongoing. Not ongoing. Yeah, and yeah. he is ongoing. So. But a lot of like more times than not, I don't end up playing Spectrum. Like she don't end up winning me the 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 games or whatever. Like there's times where I get to pull her, and then it's just like, damn, it's I don't have enough uh, ongoings out there because I have so many stones out there on the field taking it up. And so, you know, it doesn't like the little, the two points that she'll give me, f- you know, for like all the sections because I try to spread the ongoings. Out so that I don't get like enchantress like all in one go. Yeah, we gotta play some matches. I love this deck. This is definitely one of my favorite decks in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, I just hate that it's directly countered by freaking Dark Hawk. I hate that. But mm-hmm. you probably don't see too much Dark Hawk. Um, I, I don't. don't I do see Dark Hawk from time to time, but I don't see it like constantly. Like I feel it's so weird how we're in in socal but like we have like a to- a whole list a whole separate list of people that we play I know with. it's bizarre and dude. I see the same people often like there's names that I've just remembered like oh I beat this dude like before or I lost this guy once right. or and I just I see their names like all the time and I don't know if it's because I'm playing around the same time at night you know while I'm at work or whatnot and it's just the same people got the same schedule and they play or <laughs> what it is but I like I'll come across people and I'll do the Spider Man thing like yo I know you like I I played you before you know, <laughs> and, yeah, like, you know there's some names that just they have people have like weird ass names and you just kind of remember them you know. But um, but yeah, Spectrum. That's a, that's a cool one. The Dan. That's Hip. a cool variant, huh? The Dan. Hip. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, like Spectrum. I, I don't play her that often. You know, I end up playing like a couple of other things. You know, to get out like two or three cards at one time, as opposed to just playing the one or whatnot. I kind of feel like she should she should be reduced by one one uh cost. If she was a five five. Yeah, yeah. If she was a five five. But dude, like look at like everything in here. Every card is ongoing in this deck. Every single card. Every except for the rocks, but yeah, I got you. Well, yeah, except for the stones. But, like, if you're just adding, like, four of these, right, then that's eight power you're adding to her. So she becomes a 613. Right? So if you, you made her a 5-5, five, five, if you just have four ongoings on mm-hmm. board, then she's adding eight power to the game. So she becomes a 613. Do you see what I'm saying? So yeah, like, I hear you. As but well. I, but I, 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 I agree. She might be okay at a five, at a five, five. Like she wouldn't be too broken, you know what I'm saying? Like where she's like, no, because oh, I mean, oh. Devil Star on his own is like a five fifteen or five seventeen usually. Yeah, like he's really yeah. strong. Five so, five nine men, damn near. So a six thirteen is is not quite enough. But I mean, I would usually have more than just like four. But you know, as you getting as you get past four, she's like really strong. She's kind of like a little living tribunal. You know, she's like spreading power out across everywhere. Right, right, yeah. Um, winning your lanes that you had no business winning. You know? so <laughs> I like her. I like it a lot. But yeah, I do, I do, I agree with you. I do get bothered that she's a six cost. I feel like she shouldn't be a six cost. Yeah. Like, why is she a six cost, but Blue Marvel's a five cost? You know? Yeah, and 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 then on top of that, right? She's not like it's not like she's another ongoing card. She's an on reveal card. So she's Cosmo. A yeah. yeah, Cosmo, you can't drop her in a Cosmo lane. You know what I'm saying? No, so if you've got any of your other lanes clogged up or somebody drops a Cosmo in another lane, you got a Cosmo in another lane, you only got one dude, lane. Dude, I swear, this is the no. ultimate anti-Galactus deck, dude. <laughs> you must never lose to Galactus. Like, you drop Goose, 
Then you drop Cosmo. Then you drop. Where where are they playing Galactus at, man? Like I don't know. Where, I don't know where yeah. they're playing Galactus at in this deck. It really depends. You got to go against like a Wave Galactus. They come out really quick. They, yeah, but you Galactus can't play it into the Noose Lane, and you can't yeah. play Galactus into the Cosmo Lane. But you also got to get. You know, you got to manage to get all of those. Yeah, guys. you got to get those, yeah, but yeah, you're going to have yeah. them more often than not. Like, basically, like, you see your opponent play Yondu in one lane, you play Goose in the other, mm -hmm. right? And then, like, you play Cosmo in the third, you know? Yeah. Like, there's where is he supposed to play, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, or you um, cheat out Professor X, you know? <laughs> Yeah, it's and the algorithm is is also a little weird too because I seem to like when I have my uh, Galactus deck, I seem to come across other Galactus decks quite often. Yeah, a lot of people do that. That's so I don't funny. Why. Which, so many people weird, like, think like that. Um, there's like deck deck MMR, like so not <laughs> just your own personal MMR, but like a deck MMR. So like when you play a certain deck, the system like recognizes it and like yeah, hits you against like your counter. I'll be like. I'd be like, but, damn, dude, I swear. But second, dinner, but second dinner has come out like multiple times saying there it's is no not, deck. The system does not look at your deck. But, dude, it feels that way. Dude. It's just it hella coincidental that, that I and got. You know, and I like, a lot of people feel that way, dude, too. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Or, like, I go I go Thanos, and then all of a sudden I'm seeing the other dude got rocks. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, it's like, damn it. I know, man. I know. Yeah, it's going to be crazy, but. But yeah, man. So um, I've been on my journey, man. Uh, I I literally will switch from Thanos, uh, with currently Nebula in there, and it's it's kind of like because I feel like I, I spend this money on this premium, and it's like yeah, I'm getting all this other stuff, but like I get I get this card up front that not everybody's got this card up front, and so I feel like it's almost a waste if I let it go to you know the series four or five rotation belt and I didn't play it. Like I feel like I got no play out of Nimrod just because N it, Nimrod was just too high to use. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I but see, like I you no have play. a Galactus deck, oh, but you don't have Shuri. Yeah. I don't um, have Shuri. a lot of people were doing like a turn six Galactus deck with Nimrod, which you could have played because you like yeah. Galactus. Yeah, that's true. That's a that was a way to do it, and I saw some people doing that on me and stuff like that. But yeah, but like you know, certain cards, then it's just like if you don't have certain certain ways to make things work, you know, then it becomes obsolete. You know, it's just like yeah, you're so close to having this deck though, right here. I am, I am, man. This one's really close. I have, you're just missing. I have black You have stature. Yeah, I have black bull. I have stature. Um, you don't need Jeff. You could just play like Nightcrawler instead. Yeah. Um and this one runs Nebula. That's like a big part. That's like a big part of this deck is Nebula. Right. But yeah, I just I just cannot get my freaking uh Darkhawk, man. I can't have yeah, it. This is the one card. But you say he's dropping down to three soon, so I yeah, might have it'll be two. easier to get soon. I just hope they don't your nerf free series three, more, but right? I think you should get um She Hulk for your free series three. That's yeah. so crazy. You don't have any of the dopest cards, man. <laughs> I mean, I got some dope ass cards. I got no, you, you know. You do. Got, you do got some dope, dope cards, ones. but I'm just saying, like some yeah. of like the most important ones, like yeah. you know. I mean, I had got I had got cards. Red Skull. Red Skull was one of the three series cards that I got. Like I, I saw him and I was like, oh yeah, let me get him because he was just big, you know. But and I had a chance to get um, She Hulk, but like I was trying to wait and get like um, Dracula or. Uh, what was it? Venom. I was I was really trying to get Venom because I was running the. I know, um, man. I can't believe it. I waste your freaking yeah, so. pick on Venom. The Venom is good, man. I like Venom, dude. But well, he sucked before. Now he's okay, maybe. <laughs> I still thought he, I still thought he was good for the option with Arnim Zola. That's what I really wanted, just because like it was like another card that I could take with Arnim, and it would still do me good. You know, it wouldn't just like eliminate, it. and then it beefed up my freaking uh no as well. You know, you don't have Dracula. I don't have you Dracula. Don't have, I don't got you Maximus. Don't have Maximus. Nope. And you don't have Shuri. I don't got sure. All these are series three cards. They're all yeah now. Cards. Yeah, they series three now. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, crazy. So. Yeah, I like, still got some going cool. to do. I still You're missing got some of like the best cards in the game for sure. Yeah, I don't got Crossbone. I literally just got. Uh, yeah, he's not know. that great. He's not that great, but he's okay as like a replacement for like Dark Hawk or something.
Mm-hmm. Um, but he's really not that great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, she's really good with Sauron. It's a shame you don't have Typhoid mm-hmm. Mary because she's really good with Sauron, dude. Oh, yeah. Um, really good with Sauron. Because she doesn't have that negative ability to the other Because you shut it off with Sauron. Yeah, you shut off the ability. So she's just a 410, which is like super cool. Yeah. Um, you don't have Valkyrie. Which Dude, you, which you've is upgraded that Devil Dinosaur a shitload. <laughs> <laughs> I played a lot of Devil Dinosaur. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah, grief. Yeah. Oh, man, that's funny. Yeah, I, know, I, I still don't have an inky with him either. Still no ink. What, so if you upgrade it, you can get an ink or something? Is that how that goes? It's like after the third, I think, third or fourth, third upgrade. You can oh, get an ink. Okay, so there is a reason to keep going. After a certain period of yes. time, I was like, man, why am I keep going if they're just going to give me like another different version with like dots instead of bubbles or something like that, you know? I no, like that. after a while, it gets, you get options to get the ink and you get options to get the gold as well, mm. which I've never, gold? I've never got a gold. I've oh, never seen a gold. I only have two inks. Which one's um, an ink? I have, uh, I have where sunspots and ink. Oh, okay. And then I have my Cosmo, which I love. Is that an ink? Where's my Cosmo? At? Three, three. My ink, my inky Cosmo here. Mm, okay, it looks really like a cool. black and white. Because he has the black swirl with the ink. It's yeah. Really cool. So those are the two inks I've ever I've ever opened, but mm-hmm. I've tried getting inks on some other cards. Like, like for sure, I've been trying to get an ink on a Devil Dino. I've been upgrading that guy <laughs> as often as I can. I can never. Yeah, I would like to get an ink on a uh, Galactus. I think that would fit him really well. And I was trying to get an ink on America Chavez. I've upgraded her, you know, a few yeah. times as well, and an ink on uh, She Hulk. But yeah. I can't get an ink on that either. So, so yeah, yeah like that's where I'm at on some of my ink options. Dino yeah, man, come but, on. But uh but yeah, currently um I'm at uh 70 78 or 79. One of those two. Like I just hit 79, you know, so I have like okay. zero cubes in the 79. Nice. Um but uh but yeah, so that's, I'm that's climbing. the that's the hardest climb is the 70 to 80, because once you get into 80, you get that free 50, and then you're only like five away from 90, and you get the free right. 50. Yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. Like getting over that seventy to eighty hump is like you get that good like, head start. Shoot, yeah. yeah. I yeah, wish it was kind of like that. You know, like when you started playing, like you win, <laughs> you win some, and then boom, it's like seventy five, or like you start and it drops you to seventy five, not seventy. You know, to give you that kickstart. But yeah, you got to get through that that gate threshold to get to eighty five. Initial and then ten, you can f up yeah. a little bit, and then you just keep working your way back yeah, up. You know, what right. I'm saying to ninety, and then boom, you know, what I'm saying, yeah, yeah. but like. Last last month, you know, I had I had hit that ninety five, and then it was just like maybe a couple of good games where folks was just generous with eight cubes. I had a game last <laughs> night where where it was like no way this dude was gonna win. I had I had uh I had Spider Man his section, and he still stayed. Uh-huh. He stayed. Like you thought I wasn't gonna have anything to beat what you had. That's, that's bizarre, that's dude. Crazy. I be getting mad, boss. Dude. You didn't think I was gonna mad have boss, anything. Man. Like, you get mad, I, boss. Dude. I yeah. Spider Man, you. You're stuck right now with this with this score. <laughs> like you, your shit is not that high, bro. You didn't I think, think I was gonna like, play a card? Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. So, dude, that's bizarre, I love dude. Those, man, when that's I can. extra I'm generous. Like, I'm just like, thank you. I thumbs up, him, man. Like, thank you. Bro. <laughs> Thanks for staying in there for this pound, dude. Yeah. Like you're my homie. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's fist pound that, dude. Like you're my new best yeah, friend. Yeah, you definitely deserve a fist bump for for giving me eight cubes to sleep. You deserve the fist bump, dude. Like, jeez. Yeah, last night was also good for a lot of bluffing. It's it's obvious that folks want to climb. Like you know, I'll just be like, I'm not really too sure, and I'll just I'll just snap. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll just run. <laughs> like, they even want to test I know you see them not, thinking a little too long. If they're not a hundred percent sure, just that yeah. they'll, they'll run. Give man. them a reason to leave, man. Yeah, I'll just get my one cube in the fight. Yeah, and, yeah know, I'll run. take my cube and run. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was there was like one where I was like pretty sure. I was like, man, I don't got nothing. Like, I'm about to be asked out in this one. And I was just like, you gotta pay to see this. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. snap, 
<laughs> yeah, he yeah. So I was like, oh. yeah, I don't do stuff like that. Where you you have a bad hand and you snap. I never snap with bad hands, dude. <laughs> it's just because you know you just don't know the outcome. You yeah, know, like, you gotta pay to see this. You want to see this third location? You gotta yeah, pay to see yeah, that third yeah. location. Sometimes right? these dudes is <laughs> on the edge. You know, I I get it. You know, uh, yeah, I've made man. some I've made some some dangerous <laughs> gambles where I'm thinking like, oh yeah, I got this. Like. What's he gonna pull? And then he pull out some biggest shit, and it's, I lose. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, damn. All right, you got me. Like I was, stupid. I was stupid on that one. You got it, dude. <laughs> you got it. Here you go. It's a donation to you. Oh, uh, man. but but anyways, funny. man. Uh, another yeah. another solid week of uh some Marvel gameplay. I kind of wish that they just gave you like. More quests once you like, or or no, I wish that they gave you more credits. I feel like there's there's like because it's such an infinite ladder that you got to climb on the um on the uh the 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 green the green one or whatever you know yeah your collection level like it's so it's such a, a long way to climb you know what I mean they should just give you more credits like when you've used up all your quests. You've used up all of the freaking uh, the weekly joints. You know what I'm saying? Like you should get cubes and credits and boosters. You know what Dude, I'm saying? I'm always, like, I'm always boosters so sad do not matter when the like, when the weekly don't have credits. Credits. When the weekly challenge is finished, man, I'm always so sad. It's like, damn. Right. It almost makes right? you like, like not want to keep playing. That was the only know? way I was getting good credits is that the freaking weekly challenge was like keeping it heavy. Yeah. And then when that's gone, you just see like a dip. Yeah, and then these these quests aren't really giving you that much credit, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not much, you know? So it's like if you gave a little bit more, if they were all like 100, you know, if base ones were like 100 and then hard ones were like 200 or 300 or something like that, you know, it would just allow you to like, you know, keep going. But like, it would just make me want to just play even more when I've done all my quests and stuff like that, if I got a little bit of credit. Each time I played, even if it was like twenty five credit or something like that, every well, time they give you what they give you every time you play is a little bit of experience. Yeah, yeah, for your for your stuff. rank or whatever for that thing. But it's like that's cool, but it's so minuscule. Like it doesn't really matter. But the twenty five getting like twenty five credits if I win, not that's if I lose, time, though, dude. not if I lose, but if I got twenty five credits for one win, like that would be amazing. You know what I'm saying? But that's like you would like after four wins you have a hundred credits. Like you would max out your credits quick, dude. What do you mean? People play like hundreds and hundreds of games a day, you know. Mm, yeah, I mean, if they gave it to us as a limit, right? Because they say they won't give you any experience after like a certain amount of games that you play. You won't gain any more experience. So if they did the same thing with credits, like they allow yeah, you, they can't. They can't do twenty five though. It'd have to be like five. <laughs> <laughs> If they gave you like extra like five hundred credits, like no, as a max, like you play that many games, you can get five hundred credits. Yeah, maybe five hundred credits a day at like five. So you yeah. have to win like a hundred games that day. Yeah, I mean even that even five that, credits would be something because you play a lot of games just to get up. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of one cube games that you got to play that you just got to eat. Like you just spent you know five minutes playing you know, for a one cube game because the dude bells on you. You know, right when he sees shit hit the fan and four was on the line, he's bailing at one. You know what I mean? And yeah. all you get is that little teeny bit of experience in them little weak ass boosters. You know what I mean? When if you could get that. I know, dude, that, people oh, hate the boosters. 25 credits in that booster, you know? Because the boosters have no value, really. Because you get you, so many. You have, of them you them have a shitload of boosters and no credit to do nothing with it. Yeah, like, no credit to spend them what, on it. Yeah. Why I'm doing that? You know what I'm saying? What I, what I got with it? And then you get the booster, you get the uh the boosters for the, the cards that you got in your deck, and that's cool, but like I don't know, I, credits would be way more valuable, you know. Credits would, would make me play a whole lot more. I'd be trying to play, 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 you know what I'm saying? Get, <laughs> get your credits, you know, 500 uh, a day, you, 500 likes a day, yeah, 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 I hear you. I know when you're so hard, desperate but... to get series three complete, man. Yeah, like that's the I got long, to fight for. long way to go, and they keep throwing these damn avatars in my shit. I got a long way to go. 
<laughs> I well, and they also keep adding series three cards every month because that series drop. So right. I think every month they add new series three cards, just makes it harder and harder to get to series three complete. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's makes- what I was saying, man. You need to switch focuses, man. Like maybe, uh, I don't know. Token Tuesdays are still still sticking valuable. Ooh, but you should Dazzler. probably start spending your gold on uh, what's up? They got Dazzler on the market. Ah, uh, suck. No, let's spend the tokens <laughs> on that, dude. I got Dazzler. You got Dazzles? Or do I have? Do I have? Wait. Did I have Four Shanna four. in my list somewhere in here? Shanna's kind of cool. No, I don't have Shanna. Okay, good. Where did I see Shanna? Was it on your list? No, you saw Shanna on that web page. Oh, it was that web page? Okay. It's Dazzler. I have Dazzler. Dazzler's I a floor. Her. I pulled her in a box. There she is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Piece of junk, dude. Four cards at each location, dude? That's that's a Thanos deck card right there. Actually, this you're right. This isn't bad for Thanos, and she's ongoing. You throw, yeah, you throw all that shit out there for Thanos. And she'd be 10, a 410. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Maybe yeah, that might be fun playing around with you. You want Dazzler because you want to do it in Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, I'm not about to drop three k on 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 her for that. Yeah, just to try that out. Just, just to fool around with her in the Thanos deck. I might see if you know if I end up getting her pulled or something like that. I'll, I'll check her out, but I think she would probably do pretty decent in Thanos deck. I don't know what I'd take out for her though. That would be the thing. You know, something I'd take Yeah, like if we looked at that, I don't know either, dude. You'd have to pull, like, I don't know. You wouldn't pull Kazar out. You might pull Kazar out. No. I I thought about pulling him out because he's not that great. Um, Because you only have the stones and then one one drop. Yeah. Like, Blue Marvel's way better, I think, because he does everything. Because he does everything in one. one. But maybe you would drop him for Dazzler because then. Because even if you had, let's say you had all six stones out, he's a 410. And that's mm-hmm. what Dazzler would be, right? If you had every zone filled. Yeah. Well, right? Yeah, and so, like, field. you're not going to have all your six stones out usually. So he won't ever be a 410 where Dazzler will be maybe a 410 more frequently than not. I don't and know. Maybe they're, maybe they're even. I don't know. I don't know which one's better. Actually, yeah, I think that could work. You know, it would just be that it's like. Yeah, it's like a heavy in one instead of sprinkled out everywhere. Like yeah, and also heavy in one too. Sprinkled yeah. out everywhere, she would be a heavy hitter in one area by herself. And she's cool too because you can do it like the last turn of the game, so they can't like shang it. Exactly. Right? So like very last turn, you fill up the lanes, and she boosts by you know six. That's pretty strong, dude. Like it's yeah. That's interesting. That we might have to try that when we uh, stream later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just try, uh, try and put that yeah, in the slip her in. You can play around with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That that might be a decent swap just because of the fact that Kazar only boosts the ones. It would just and suck because if you have Professor X out. in the lane, then you're never gonna fill up all your lanes. She'll never yeah. hit you there, but he would. But so most of the time, I don't be throwing out Professor X like that. Because there'd be so many other cards that I end up getting. Like, Professor X doesn't fall in my hands like that. Or it just doesn't uh, seem like the right time. Like- <laughs> we got to play this one together, too. Which one? The one I shared, this one here. This Dino X. I think this yeah. might be pretty strong for you. Oh, okay. Pretty yeah. Cool. You just said yeah. you had this deck. Yeah, I have everything there. That one. That one's pretty basic. Because Do- Daredevil's pretty, pretty dope in here. I like Daredevil a lot. Yeah. So, like, you can easily screw over a Galactus player with Arrow, man, for sure. Mm, yeah. Dude, uh, Magneto? Uh, Polar, Polarize or whatever? What's that, that one? Yeah, Polaris. Polaris. And, um, yeah, basically, like, those two, those have screwed me over quite a few times. Yeah, with, Magneto with stakes like, some wins, dude. Magneto I'm like, stake some I'm wins. like, damn, dude. And I, of course, I got a three out there, you know, on a Galactus, because it's like I pulled Wave, you know. What I mean, I yeah. threw Wave and he Magnetos, and it's like, God, dog, it, man. You know what I mean? It drag it drags Wave over to the side yeah. and it it shut down. Yeah, man. especially like, if he has priority, dude. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes Polaris will get you with like one of those, one of those uh, one drops and pull Yandu, like Yandu they pull Yandu right over into your Galactus lane. I know, man. Yeah, and I've been gotten uh 
a couple of times by uh Professor X. Like I said, like my first week, uh, it was Professor X out the wazoo, man. They just drop it. I would drop Galactus, Professor X. And of course, Galactus got this weak ass too. So yeah. he, he, you know, Professor X has a three and it's just it's been lost. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's why I was like wondering if you were able to climb with Galactus because it just felt like there are so many counters out there at the moment. I was, I was after a while. I was winning games. Like I can win games now, but that first, like that first week, I don't know. Professor X was like on some steroids or some shit. Like that everybody wanted to play with Professor X. I don't know. Yeah, because every, yeah, because of Nebula, dude. Oh, okay. Cause because of you, cause, you, cause you play Nebula and then you drop Professor X in that lane. And then Nebula grows. So even if right. like you're losing it originally, she'll help you win it, right, Professor X, right? right. So like, yeah. So yeah, that's why everyone's every time. Nebula. Every time I tried to use her and Professor X, like I, <laughs> she would get destroyed before Professor X even came into my hand, or I couldn't, I couldn't get either of those two like to to get that matchup, you know. And then Storm is like she's cool, but you just Doctor Doom that shit, and it's like irrelevant, you know what I mean? That you that you had storm out there, it's too much stuff. So or she could she just gets picked off by a gambit. I've had that happen quite a few times, you know. So just don't get lucky. But uh, but yeah, man. So that's all we got for the uh the podcast yeah. this week. Um, we we are gonna try to do like a lot of uh a lot more um streaming as far as like gameplay and stuff like that. I know uh Sir Knight did it at least like three times this week, something like that. And I was able to get in one time. Uh, quality wasn't that great just because of cell phone reception and whatnot. I was playing on my phone. But, you know, hopefully I can try to. Yeah, I think uh, we were going to try to stream tonight, weren't we? Uh, yeah, we can try to stream tonight. Like a late night one. You mentioned yeah, like maybe we do like a late night stream. We can um, try to get you up there, climb some yeah. links. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But um, I'll hit you up, um, and we'll see if we can work out a time or whatnot. But I got to get some sleep. I'm tired. Yeah, I got you, man. Yeah. But all right, man. Uh, you know, uh, we'll catch you guys later. This is Snap Squad and we out. Peace.